Well, I'd like to look at interacting galaxies because I think that uh, using the big telescope with its better light grasp it can see more than telescopes can now. J'ai décidé de chercher comment déterminer la grandeur de l'univers si l'univers va se fermer ou va continuer à être étendu jusqu'à l'infini. Unveiling the secrets of the sky, understanding the nature of the stars, charting the depths of space, dreams as old as mankind itself. Dreams which have been the source of innumerable science fiction stories that have spellbound generations of young people. Today, scientists have advanced considerably in studying nature in exploring the universe. Their methods may be less spectacular than those of their fictional colleagues. The technology they apply, however, is as advanced, a marvel of human ingenuity and technological development. Unlike the space travelers of science fiction, we cannot travel to the stars. Yet we are able to learn a lot about the nature of the celestial objects by analyzing the radiation, such as light, emitted by them. Astronomers use telescopes to catch the light and advanced auxiliary instruments to detect and analyze it. The heart of a telescope is its primary mirror. The larger it is, the more light it can collect and the sharper images it can produce. Today, many telescopes have mirrors of four to five meters diameter. To keep their required shape, such mirrors made of massive glass must be thick and thus become very heavy. This in turn requires solid structures to hold the mirrors. Hence, these telescopes become giant dinosaurs of glass and steel, reaching the limit of what is possible with conventional telescope technology. However, to catch the feeble light from objects at the farthest depths of space, larger mirrors are needed. Fortunately, telescope builders have found ways to construct much larger instruments. A key element is thin mirror technology, which has been pioneered by ESO, the European Astronomy Organization. A thin mirror is of course much lighter than a conventional one, so it can be made much larger but such a mirror will bend under gravitational pull, losing its optical perfection. However, if the mirror rests on a computer-controlled active support system, it can be maintained at its ideal shape at all times. The telescope is a very, very complex technological device, but nevertheless, its essential task is remarkably simple. Uh, namely to catch and sharply focus the light from very distant objects. Now this means that the most important part of the telescope is really the very thin aluminium layer coating the mirrors which reflect the light to the image. The entire massive structure, and this includes the classically thicker and thicker mirrors as the mirrors got bigger, uh, supporting this aluminium layer, uh, all this massive and bulky structure is simply there to serve essentially two purposes. Firstly, to steer this reflecting layer to the point in the sky you wanted to look at, and secondly, to maintain its shape. Now it occurred to me that uh, we could make all this structure much lighter including reducing the thickness of the mirror, which goes through the whole system from the point of view of weight production, uh, by replacing this classical system of support of the primary by a system of active control of the support forces. And this means, in practical terms, that the mirror is now placed on a system of computer-controlled actuators 
which determine the necessary forces, rather than putting it on the classical passive system where the forces were predetermined. This idea was successfully tested for the first time on the new 3.5 meter telescope at ISO's La Silla site in the Chilean Atacama Desert. Very appropriately, this instrument was called the New Technology Telescope, or NTT. This telescope, which entered into operation in 1990, is one of the world's most advanced astronomical instruments. Its primary mirror weighs about half of that of a classical telescope mirror, but thanks to the active mirror support, as well as other innovative features, its performance exceeds that of other telescopes of similar size. At the same time, the NTT serves as a testbed for a unique next-generation telescope, which is currently being developed at ESO under the name of the ESO 16-metre Equivalent Aperture Very Large Telescope, or, for short, the VLT. In reality, this telescope is not one instrument, but an array of telescopes, which can either work together, featuring the light-collecting power of a 16-meter telescope, or independently. Each of the giant mirrors is a thin mirror, only 17.8 centimeters thick, and thus requiring an active support system. The core of the VLT consists of four 8.2-meter telescopes. They will have several foci to enable a family of detectors and auxiliary instruments to be mounted. The potentially most powerful mode of operation, however, involves the VLT coherent focus. In this mode, the light from all of the telescopes can be combined coherently. Working together, the telescopes then act as a giant interferometer, enabling astronomers to study celestial objects in unprecedented detail. To improve its performance even further, the array of main telescopes may be supplemented by a number of movable 1.8-metre telescopes mounted on tracks. The resolving power of an optical instrument depends on the diameter of the light collector. The lens of the human eye has a diameter of approximately 8 millimetres, enabling us to see objects with an angular size of one minute of arc. An 8-metre telescope allows a resolution of one hundredth of a second of arc, 6,000 times better than the eye. In the interferometric mode, the resolution is determined by the distance, or baseline, between the telescopes. Fully implemented, the VLT interferometer will permit objects of an angular size of only 0.7 milliarc seconds to be detected. This would, in principle, even make it possible to see astronauts on the surface of the Moon. For scientists, such a performance opens the door to entirely new research possibilities. will allow to look at the very distant universe. It will allow to see objects very far back at the time of the birth of the universe or at the very early universe. These objects would be galaxies in their very early stage of formation and we don't know yet really how do they form. It is violent phenomena probably with a triggering of strong star formation and also of formation of heavy elements and dust. In the near infrared, we will be able to see objects embedded in giant molecular clouds, which prevent us to detect them in the optical. In the infrared also, we would look at very exciting phenomena in the very core of the molecular cloud of our own galaxy, which is the burst of a star. Images tell you that an object exists. 
but doesn't give information on its physics. For that, you need spectroscopy. You derive from spectroscopy is the distance, therefore how young was the object. You can also derive detailed kinematics, how violent were the movements in that object. However, before the enormous seeing potential of the VLT can be fully exploited, a fundamental problem must be solved. As light from a star passes through the terrestrial atmosphere, it's influenced by turbulence, pockets of air moving quickly up or down. This causes the twinkling of the stars that we see every night. In technical terms, the wavefront of the light is distorted by the air turbulence, much as the fender of a car is dented in an accident. But, unlike the fender, the distortion of the wavefront changes rapidly with time, as the motion of air is an ever-changing process. To overcome this problem, ESO and research centers in France have jointly developed a device which is capable of real-time correction of the wavefront distortion. The device is called Come On Plus. It is currently being tested at ESO's 3.6-meter telescope at La Silla. The heart of the instrument is a small deformable mirror. It is placed in the light path in front of the detector. By quickly changing its shape, it is able to correct the deformation of the wavefront. The light from the star is reflected by the deformable mirror. The deformation of the wavefront is measured by an image analyzer and corrective signals are sent to the 52 pads supporting the mirror. The mirror changes its shape accordingly until the atmospheric turbulence causes a new and different deformation of the wavefront. As the atmospheric disturbances are corrected by the adaptive optic system, the telescope performs as if it were in space. Active optics, adaptive optics, interferometry. Europe's new super telescope will employ the most advanced technology, some of which will only be available towards the turn of the century. Well, it seemed very daring when we conceived the VLT about 10 years ago now to propose those new techniques, adaptive optics and interferometry for it, because they were considered by many people rightly to be in their infancy. But after all, the VLT is a sum of challenges. No one had even polished an 8-meter meniscus active mirror before either. So now, 8 or 10 years afterward, we see that those techniques have already made great progresses. And for instance, adaptive optics is producing science and publishing papers. So the extrapolation to the VLT was daring, but reasonable. The VLT is one of the most ambitious science machines that mankind has ever undertaken to build. As such, it also poses an enormous challenge to European industry, which is currently engaged in the construction work. The VLT primary mirrors are monoliths, single pieces of glass. Until the VLT, no one had ever cast a mirror of this size so completely new manufacturing techniques had to be developed by the contractor, the Schott Glassworks in Mainz, Germany. We are witnessing the casting of one of the giant mirrors. At 1,400 degrees Celsius, 45 metric tons of molten glass is poured into the mold. By spinning the mold during the first cooling phase, the glass assumes a rough meniscus shape before the subsequent series of manufacturing stages. After the removal of excess glass, the mirror blank goes through the ceramization cycle. The glass ceramics, known by the name of Zero Dur, features a thermal zero expansion coefficient, important for retaining the optical quality of the VLT. Rayosk, the French optical company, is responsible for the polishing of the giant mirror blanks. 
During this process, the mirrors are polished to a precision of a few hundredths of a millimeter. All in all, the manufacture of one mirror takes about four years. Meanwhile, a number of Italian companies are busy with the huge mechanical structures which are needed to support the mirrors. Here, close to Naples, parts of the giant azimuth tracks are being manufactured. Machined to a precision better than one-tenth of a millimetre, the assembled tracks weigh about 130 metric tonnes. Although they come from a large number of factories, every bit and piece must fit exactly as they're put together for testing at Ansaldo in Milan. This test assembly is necessary for the ESO engineers and technicians to verify functionality and compliance with the technical specifications before the telescopes are shipped to their final destination. But even the best telescope is useless to scientists without the required instrumentation. Consortia of national research institutes are working with the ESO to develop the first generation of advanced instruments for the VLT. Such instruments are exceedingly complex, optical and mechanical masterpieces. Their development follows in close collaboration with the end users, the active scientists. The Atacama Desert in Chile, one of the most desolate places on the surface of this planet. Here, nature has created a remarkable climate, which, despite its inhospitable appearance, is one of the best suited sites for an astronomical observatory. The cold Humboldt ocean current running along the Pacific coastline of Chile and the impressive Andes range to the east form protective barriers against clouds. The land in between them is exceedingly dry and provides 350 cloudless nights a year. The view from an aircraft flying along the Pacific coast shows the dramatic change in climate between the humid coastline and the desert area behind. Site specialists from ESO surveyed the area for a decade in order to locate suitable sites. In 1990, the choice fell on Cerro Paranal, a 2,664-metre-high mountain 12 kilometres inland from the Pacific Ocean and some 130 kilometres south of the town of Antofagasta, capital of the second region of Chile. Antofagasta proudly describes itself as the window on the sea and the gate to the desert. The deep water port of Antofagasta serves the ships bringing in the heavy VLT structures and ESO has established an office there. The mountain site had to be prepared for the VLT. First, 28 metres or 250,000 cubic metres of rock had to be removed from the top in order to create a platform big enough for the VLT. Working at Paranal may be hard, yet it's also highly satisfying for all those involved. Well, to work for the project at Cerro Paranal is very important for my professional career because this is the largest project in this field that was ever undertaken in the country. Therefore, the professional satisfaction obtained, in addition to the new responsibilities that one gets, is greatly motivating. 
What does this mean? It has been a rewarding experience. It has been fulfilling. It has been wonderful to work here. This is a great project, not only for me, but also for the people working here. It is important for the region and for the country. To me, to work here has been very important and enriching because I have learned a lot of things and met many foreign people, and that, to me, is great. For several years, the platform will remain a busy building site, working place for hundreds of construction workers and engineers. A large number of specialists of different trades and professions must work hard before Europe's scientists can train their new super telescope on the sky for the first time. The first of the large unit telescopes is expected to be fully operational by 1998. From then on, the other telescopes will be ready at one-year intervals. Placed on its mountain top in the Chilean Atacama Desert, ESO's VLT will be a unique science instrument serving the world's scientific community. This is the first time, I think, in the last um, 15 years or so, that uh, in ground-based optical astronomy, the, uh, Europe has decided to make investments which are comparable to those that are being made in the United States. So the role of ESO in the, in the European community is to, in fact, to be in charge of those projects which are so large that exceed the capability of a single nation to do them. And so ESO should do those things which the community wants and which are too big for a single nation to do. So in that sense, VLT is a perfect uh, project for ESO to undertake. But, um, I think VLT is unique in that among all of the large uh, telescope project. It has put a lot of attention and has a lot of potential for interferometry. In that sense, uh, apart from being the very largest telescope, uh, it will give particular capabilities in the interferometric field in which all of the telescopes will be used together, the four eight-meter telescopes that we're building will be used together to achieve a higher angular resolution. That will be a unique capability that uh, nobody else in the world will have. And uh, I think, in general, ESO will uh, be um, open to cooperative arrangements with scientists from all over the world to use this particular unique capability. Since the first visionary ideas about the VLT were formulated, and until its completion, more than 20 years will have passed. The VLT, therefore, is first of all an instrument for the coming generations of scientists. Bueno, um, yo quiero observar, o sea, quiero comprobar la existencia de la materia oscura. Y um, porque me interesa llegar a la meta, mi meta es eh, concluir si es que nuestro universo es cerrado o es eh, abierto. J'ai voulu euh, observer euh, ce qu'avec le VLT et l'identité des, des noyaux de galaxies superactifs euh, qui en fait ont des conditions euh, vraiment extrêmes. On, on, leur, euh, on, on dit souvent que ce sont des monstres exotiques. With the VLT, scientists will explore the farthest reaches of the universe, pushing back the frontier of the unknown and helping us to better understand our own place in space and time.